Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome back to day three of our three-day workshop about cats. So, for the last few days, we have been learning about famous artists who have very distinct styles that as soon as you see, you know who that art, as soon as you see a painting, you know who that artist is. So, Van Gogh had crazy wild brushstrokes and awesome color. Juan Moreau, yesterday, had dreamlike symbols incorporated all throughout his work and used simple lines, colors, and shapes. And today, we're learning about George Rodrigue. Now, George Rodrigue is most famous for his blue dog. It makes an appearance in almost all of his work, and his blue dog is doing all sorts of things, but he's always kind of has the same expression and the same sitting position, huh? Hmm, interesting. So today, we're doing what any good cat would do. We're taking a painting of a famous dog, and we're making it all about them, all about ourselves. So, let's go ahead and open up bag number three. Ooh, not a lot in bag number three today, but these are super fun, and I bet you probably already know what they are. They are oil pastels. So these are amazing little crayons that are really good at blending and covering up the paper. They're way better than crayons or colored pencils. So we're gonna push those over to the side. Spoiler alert, we're you, we'll, we are using mostly blue today. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and take this information about George Rodriguez and put it to the side. If you wanna read about that later, you can. Make sure you have a pencil handy. We're gonna be drawing out our cat, who's gonna replace a famous dog, um, on our paper first, and then we'll color in as soon as we have a good basic drawing. So, first off, we need to make sure that this dog becomes more cat-like. So make sure that as you're drawing this, you're thinking cat. So cats have uh, smaller ears than our example of a George Roderick Q dog. And they also have more pointed kind of cat-like football shaped eyes. So really fast, I want you drawing in pencil, but I'm gonna be drawing with an oil pastel. And we're going to draw out the basic shape of our cat first. So I'm going to start with the top of his head or her head. And so I'm going to start kind of a little bit above the halfway point of my paper and I'm going to draw a nice curvy line. Next I'm going to do some pointed ears and then I'm going to make the chin. I'm just going to start at one ear and I'm going to work all the way over to the other side. And you'll notice that I made my curvy line bow just a little bit in the middle so that it looks a little bit more like a point. Oops. Now, this is why you use pencil and not oil pastels. Oopsies. Okay, so next, let's go ahead and put in those eyes. I'm actually, no, I, I am mistaken, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and put in the nose. So the nose is going to be very simple. We're gonna start with a curved line, and then we're gonna bring two lines to a point, and then put little hooks from the point of the nose all the way up the mouth. I like to have my cat smiling, because I feel like my cat's kind of mischievous enough to something. Then I'm gonna draw three whiskers on either side of the face. I can put in little tiny lines for the nose. And then I'm going to put in my eyes. I'm gonna come up just a little bit. I'm gonna do two little diagonal lines. And then from those diagonal lines, I'm gonna create a hill. And then a bowl. 
All right. Now, if you are drawing with pencil, you can do what I didn't do, which is erase, which I can't do, which is erase, and get your eyes about the same size. Mine are not. Oh well. It is what it is. Now, inside the eye, I'm going to put two curved lines that kind of look like parentheses. Okay. And then, of course, the black part of the eye, which is another set of curved lines, but they're closer together. Okay. Now, if you are using the oil pastel, which you shouldn't be, like I am, you can color these in, or you can wait and color them in later. I'm gonna use, leave just a little bit of white showing in either eye so that it looks a little bit more lifelike. Eyes have a reflection light to them. Okay, so I have my cat's face. Now, for the body, we can keep it nice and simple. I'm gonna show you on the back. We can keep it nice and simple. Let me draw a cat really fast. Okay, we can keep it simple and just draw curved lines coming down on either side of the body and then a curved line to finish them off. Then you can draw two curved lines right there and two straight lines right here and put in the paws. Now that is the simple way to do it if you want a nice simple cat, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. If you want a more complex way, we're going to flip it back over and I'm going to show you how to do a more complex kind of Georgia review style cat. I'm going to come down and make two curved lines on either side of his or her body. And then I'm going to end with paws that come up and meet kind of end, kind of in the middle, and then do a curved line, okay? So that is the start of my cat. Then I'm gonna come off to the side and do a curved line, and then a flat foot off to the side. That is how you do kind of a George Roger Hugh cat or dog. Heated dogs, we're doing cats. I'm also going to put in a little teeny tiny hint of a foot right there. There we go. Now, as far as background goes, you can do anything you want. Um, if you still have paint from yesterday, you could break out the brushes and paint a lot of this in. I'm going to show you how to use oil pastels um, on the next few steps. But remember, you could paint if you don't like the oil pastels. Okay, so we're going to keep our cat blue, just like George Roger you did. But we're going to have a little bit more fun with it. We're not just going to color it in one solid color. We're going to learn about how to blend the oil pastels. Now, if you haven't done so, I would take your oil pastel. I forgot that you guys haven't done this because I already have. You're gonna take your oil pastel and you're gonna go over your pencil lines that you wanna keep and make them permanent. Once you've done that, then you're gonna start coloring. So I'm gonna grab my oil pastel and you notice how it really covers up a lot of the white. It's not like crayon. It doesn't leave a bunch of like little white dots in between. It's very oily, okay? So crayons have wax that binds the color together. Oil pastels have oil. So that means they're a little bit easier to blend. Now, I'm going to color in just this front part of his body for now. And you'll notice anytime I get close to the black, do you notice how it kind of turns the blue a darker color? Yeah, we're gonna use that to our advantage here soon. Now, I'm going to space out my strokes or swatches of blue and let some of that white show through. And I'm gonna tell you why in just a second. So I'm going to go really heavy and dark. The harder you press, the, um, the more it covers and the less white of your paper shows. 
And then I'm going to push really light in the center to show that it's going to be darker on the edge. And then when we come back in with white, we'll be able to make it much brighter. So I'm going to do just a little bit more. And now that I have most of it covered, I'm going to stop and grab my white. I'm going to take my white and I'm going to start coloring in wherever there's white showing. And I'm going to bring it out to the edge of the blue. Now, if that's too light for you, you can always come back in with your blue and cover it up just a little bit. And do you see how they really blend together? So you have to go over the same area a few times with different colors in order to get them to blend together. You can also use your finger. You wanna be careful not to have any black or weird random bits in or else it will blend the black in too. Okay, so your finger's gonna get a little blue, but that's okay. You'll be blue like your cat. Now, I can also go back in in areas where I want it darker, I can take my black and put a little bit on, leave it a little scratchy, and then use my finger and blend. Look at how easy it is to blend with oil pastels. So much easier. You could never do this with crayon. Okay, so I have the start of my cat. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video a little bit here, and I'm gonna color in the rest of my cat and then we'll stop and talk about the background. Okay, let's go forward. Okay, so, I now have everything colored in. I am going to come back in and I can use uh, one of the ends of my paint brushes from the other day. And I can come in and if I don't like something, I can actually use the end of it to kind of scratch off some of the oil pastel. Now, it won't get rid of it completely, but it will get rid of some of it. So if, for instance, there's an area that you want a little bit lighter, you can take the end of your paintbrush and kind of scratch it off. And then, you know, come back in with your blue and brighten it up a little bit, or your white, whatever you want. Okay. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do. One thing that I would suggest you do is to go back over some of your black lines and brighten them up. And also add back in your whiskers. Because, uh oh, your whiskers are like mine, they disappeared. Okay, and then the last thing that we're going to do is put in some detail. We're going to. Um, color in his nose almost all black. And then we're going to put little triangles of black inside the ears. And then it can be a little bit rugged and rough if you want. You can also put some tufts of hair on top. And just kind of do any touch-ups wherever you feel like it needs. Now, another thing that you can do is put in the yellow for the eyes. That is another very distinct part of George's work. Uh -oh. And remember, if it gets a little bit too dark, I like to use my thumbnail, but the back end of your paintbrush works too, to add or take off 
anything that gets too dark. And even though George didn't have this, I'm gonna put in a pink nose, because I think it's cute. Okay, all right, so we have a booty cat that is done in the style of George Roderick Yule. And now we have to talk about the background. So again, you're welcome to use paint if you want to, to paint in the background, or you can do what I'm about to do. I'm gonna take my oil pastels and I'm going to just color in and do some, have some fun blending in the background. Now, obviously we did a blue cat. So you wouldn't wanna do a blue background because blue on blue will not stand out. Instead, I would suggest maybe using like your orange and your yellows and maybe even your reds. You could go with a cool color like your greens, okay? Whatever you'd like to do, but just stay away from blue, please. I'm going to use pink, orange, red, and yellow for my background. And I'm going to start by giving this cat a place to sit on. So I'm going to put in that line. Everything below that line is going to be pinks and reds. Everything above that line is going to be oranges and yellows. So remember, you can have a lot of fun blending. You can get in close. Make sure you don't go too far into your cat. Go right up to the black line, but don't go past it. And I'm just going to keep on blending. Notice how I am taking that pink and I am covering up some of the red, especially any areas where maybe some white was showing. And then I can also go back in and put some more red in if I need to. I can also use my finger, okay, and blend wherever I feel like I need. Try not to let any of the black from your cat get on or in your color, if you can help it. Sometimes it happens, it's happening to me, and that's okay. I'm just gonna pretend like I want it to look like that. And then I'm gonna come up here and do the same thing that I'm doing down there, but I'm going to use orange and yellow. Orange and blue, so I'm putting this orange right next to this blue, are really good colors when put next to each other. And the reason for that is that they complement each other or they vibrate against each other. They're across from each other on the color wheel and they're called complementary colors, okay? So colors that complement each other. So basically what that means is that they have a lot of simultaneous contrast. They contrast against each other. Okay, I'm gonna speed up the video and I'll stop it just a second and show you what I came up with. Okay, all finished. Your hands should look like mine. If they don't, you need to color more. So, we have a fun George Rodrigue inspired cat instead of his normal dog. And we are all finished with this fun three day series. I hope you learned a lot and had some fun making your own cat inspired art. Well, artist inspired cats, I should say. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. I'll see you all again very soon, I hope. Bye. Thank you for watching this online program. Please help Garden City Arts thank these generous sponsors.